Okay. Next thing we're going to do is draw something on the display. So we'll just draw a little red rectangle or square, and uh, that'll get us started to being able to draw shapes. All right. So let's go ahead and open up main. In order to draw a rectangle, we need to do this from the game display class. So we'll just make a simple function called draw rect. We're not going to give it any dimensions or location. We'll just use some default so we can see it working first. So we've got void draw rectangle as part of game display. All right, so to do that, we need to do um, we need to do a couple things. So there's two things we need in order to draw a rectangle. We need to set the color with a function called set foreground, and then we need to draw the rectangle with that color. So we're going to call x fill rectangle. It's filled because it's going to be filled in with the color. Okay, to set the foreground, we can look at that real quick. If you look up X set foreground online, it tells you you need, you can find this in the header file too. We can look at that next. X set foreground, we want to give it the display, the GC, which is, on this page it doesn't tell you what a GC is. If you start clicking around, you can figure out what it is, but it's a graphics context. All that means is some the information that defines the location where you're going to draw the graphics. And then we need a foreground color. It says foreground. Right here it says specifies the foreground you want to set for the specified GC. That's the color. And the way the color works is it's just red, green, and blue stacked in a unsigned long. All right, so the display for set foreground is our display. The graphics context, or the GC, there's a function called get, uh, I think it's called default GC. And we just give it the display and the screen. So that will give us that. And then we need a color. And the color will just be a hexadecimal value. We'll make it red. So red, green, blue. Okay. These are the bytes. 00, zero FF. Zero, 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 zero. All right, red, green, blue. <clears throat> we could store that in a number here. Unsigned long color. We don't need the leading zeros. So you could just do this. And then it looks kind of like a web color. All right, for the fill rectangle, we do the same thing. We need to give it the display. Let's look at that real quick. For the fill rectangle, we give it a display, we give it a drawable. Come back to that. And then we give it the graphics context, the XY position, and the width and the height. So that's it. The drawable is the window. Again, default graphics context for the display and the screen. And then we need to give it, after GC, we give it XY width and height. So we'll do 10 over, 10 down, and we'll make it 20 by 20. Okay? There's our draw rectangle function. We're just going to draw one thing, a uh, rec rectangle. We'll make it wider so it's actually a rectangle, 40. And uh, it'll be color, it should be color red if I did this right. Okay, the other thing we need to do is it, it doesn't know to call this function. So we need to tell it to call draw rectangle at the right time. And the question is, well, when do you call this function? Well, when a window is drawn, it gets an event called an expose event, meaning that the window is being displayed on the screen. So anytime we display the window or it's resized, an expose event is um, issued and that tells it it's time to draw. It's time to draw yourself. So first thing we need to do is be able to capture that event. We need to tell xlib that we want it to send us those type of events, and then we'll respond to it by calling the draw function. 
So right up here where it says X select input, currently we've only selected the key press events to be sent to us, not expose events. If we want expose events, then we have to add exposure mask. That tells us that we want, that tells X lib that we want it to send us exposure events as well. Now in our event handler down here in game where we call handle event, you can search for it by doing, if you press escape in vim, and you do forward slash, you can start typing the name of something, it is case sensitive, and then when you hit enter, it'll search for it. And if you hit slash and enter again, it'll search for the next one. And slash and enter again, we'll search for the next one. At this time, it says it's they hit the bottom, so it didn't find any more between my current position and the bottom, so it went, it started over at the beginning and found the first one. So that's the one that the cursor's on now, which is right here. All right, so let's go back here. In handle event, inside the handle event function, that's where we wanna go. We're handling key press events. We want to add the handling of exposure events. So if it's an exposure, I believe it's just expose. Yeah, it's just expose. Then we're gonna just call game display draw rectangle. Okay, that's it. So we get the event. When it's an expose event, then we know it's time to draw everything that needs to be drawn in the window. And one of those things is this rectangle. All right, let's see if that works. Hey, there's a rectangle, red rectangle. And when we hit the arrow keys up and down, it um, doesn't change anything. Everything still works the way that it's supposed to, and it exits like it's supposed to. All right, one more thing. Let's see if when we resize it, it draws it. Okay, it does. That's good. So we move it. There's going to be an exposed event. You can see event 12 is happening here. Okay. When I move it, we don't get an expose event, but if I resize it, we do. Because it has to redraw the screen based on the current size of the view. So it's gonna call it every single time it's, re, um, it's resized. Um, you can also see, I'm just pressing enter to give some space so we can see uh, when the next event happens. If I push an arrow key, there's no expose event. That would be event 12 is the expose event. We see event two, which is a key press, but we don't see an event 12. So it's not causing an expose event by pressing a key on the keyboard. It only happens when you resize it. All right, let's run it again. And you see at the very beginning, there's an expose event. When it first shows the window, we get an expose event. And then of course, anytime resizing. Okay, so that gives us the ability to draw something. All right, so we added the draw rectangle function to our game display class. We told it how to draw a rectangle. We gave it a color and we told it what color to draw with. So we said select the red color, use this color for all drawing operations from this point forward. So we're changing the state and then we say draw a filled rectangle on this display in this window using this default graphics context and make it this size. Okay. So let's just change the color real quick. You could do this on your own. Let's change it to just to make sure we understand correctly. We'll change the second byte to FF, which is 255. So that should be green. Let's see if that gives us a green rectangle. Yeah, there's a green rectangle. Okay. And lastly, let's try a blue rectangle. So that should be 00FF. Rebuild and rerun, and there's a blue rectangle. All right, so let's get a color that we like, right? I like to use Google's color picker. Let's pick something. 
like this. That looks good. Okay, so you can see the red, green, blue values are right here. In uh, They are in decimal. We actually want these here that are already in hex. For the web, they use a pound sign. For C++, we use 0x in front. So let's copy that. Let's go back into our code. We'll search for draw rect with forward slash. Forward slash again. Okay, there we're at the function. So now we'll delete everything after the 0x prefix and paste, control shift V, we'll paste the value that we read from the web. All right, let's rebuild it and rerun it and it should be the same color. All right, let's see. Yeah, it looks like the same color. Okay, so that's how you set the color. All right. All right, now it's not very useful to just draw a rectangle that always has the same size, shape, and color. So let's take it a step further and we will tell it to draw a rectangle. Let's give it the color and we'll give it the X position, the Y position, the width, and the height. So something outside of the game display class can draw a different sized or, sh or colored rectangle. Then you can change this and just copy it. I can select it with the mouse, right click on it and copy in GNOME terminal. And then I can come down here to this line and uh, I can hit Control Shift V while I'm in insert mode. Insert mode is right here, Control Shift V and that will paste it. I can get rid of the extra stuff that I didn't need. All right, so now we have all those. Get rid of this. We'll use that color, and then here we will put um, X, Y, width, height. Just comment that out for now. Oh, we also need to change it where we call the function, because before we just didn't give it any arguments, so now we need to give it those arguments. So we'll give it our color, which was what? 6091AB. 6091AB. 6091AB is the color. And then 10 over, 10 down, 20 by 40. Okay. There we go. Let's go ahead and delete the extra code we don't need anymore. So this and our comment over here we don't need. All right, so now we can draw a rectangle with whatever color and position and size we want. So we're getting close. You can see we're getting close.